Hello, this is Socrates for I am 3D Graphics looking at Modeler Lightwave 10. Let's get right into it. The first thing you're looking at are four basic windows. You have a perspective, a top, back, and a right. The top, back, and right windows are orthogonal views, meaning they are looking at the same point in 3D space. In this case, when Modeler first opens up, you're looking at the origin of X0, Y0, Z0. Each of the windows, you have the option to pan, you can also zoom, and maximize. Go ahead and maximize this window. Then we're going to bring it back to its default um, value. You can zoom in, left click and drag to the left. We're going to left click and um, drag up. We're going to hit A to get back to our uh, maximized view. I'm going to hit the comma to zoom out a little bit. Now you can also gimbal. This is something that's only available in the perspective view, or you can just hit the Alt key, left click and drag, and you can um, gimbal your image. In the view menu, you have the uh, top and the to the left of that is the uh, how you're looking at it, but this is, if you want to change how you're looking at an object, you can do it there. Also have a space for UV texture, and then um, how are you looking at the view? How is that uh, uh, view going to be rendered? Texture or texture wire? Normally your orthogonal views are texture wire because you can see everything in the window. Um, you can see, basically you can see through your object. I'm going to move it back to the default. If you want to change the real estate, just click on the crosshairs of the, um, the workspace and you can drag it around and uh, resize the workspace. I'm going to move it back here into the middle. Or just click uh, Control Z to undo. To the right are your tools, and to the top there are the menu tabs. To remove those, you just hit Alt F2 to maximize your workspace. Hit Alt F2 again to bring those tools back. In the top, from File to the Image Editor, are fixed tools, meaning those are always constant regardless of how I move through the menu tabs. So I click on each of the menu tabs, you will see that the file and image editor tabs or menu tools do not change, but the tools underneath there do according to the menu tabs that I am selecting. If we move cruise on to the right, we are looking at the um, Object or current object menu, you can have multiple objects in Modeler and they will all show up here. The asterisk shows you that something has changed in the um, in the object and it needs to be saved. Um, and to the right of that is the layer bank and each bank has, uh, as you click on the left and right arrows, you can increase the, um, the layer banks that you're looking at. Each layer bank has a possible a maximum of 10 layers. and when a uh, layer is populated, it'll have a carrot or a white um, crosshairs in the upper left hand corner. Um, if you click on an empty layer, what we're going to do is select layer two. And we're going to click layer one, the lower half of the menu or of, the, of that layer to put the layer in the background. It is now a reference object. So we can use that object to place things in our scene. Now, can I edit it with the object when it is in background mode? So we can click back into layer one, and now the object is now editable. So those, that's a brief overview of layers. I'm gonna look at the information panel. No tools are selected, so all we are going to get at this point are or is the uh, position of the cursor. So I'm looking at two vectors and I'm going to see the position of the two vectors as I move through the boxes. So here I'm going to see X, Y in the back view. As I move into the top box, I'm going to see X, Z and to the right, I'm going to see Y, Z because those are the planes that are available to, available to me in 2D, well, it's 3D space, but we're looking at a, a, a 2D application. When I move into the perspective view, I am now in a tr real 3D space, which means I have a lot of offsets, so I'm not gonna get that two vector um, update. By going to the grid panel, 
I can move through the, um, change the size of my grids by um, basically by zooming in. So if I hit the period, 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 I'm zooming in and you can see the grid's getting smaller and smaller. I can zoom out again by hitting the comma key and I'm zooming uh, back to our starting point of 500 millimeters. To the right of the information panel is called the selection menu. So if I click on uh, a square, I'm going to hit two two points. It's going to show me I've selected two points. If I deselect one of the points, it's going to show me that I have one point selected. To the right of the selection um, panel, there's a um, what is it? let's say a calculation bar. Basically, anytime Lightwave does any type of calculation, um, this a bar will scroll from left to right. Once it gets to the far right, it lets you know that the calculation is complete. It's just a feedback or a visual tool to let you know that um, Lightwave is doing something. It hasn't crashed. To the left of that, or excuse me, to the right of that is an information panel. So as I click on certain tools or menus, um, it gives me some feed feedback that I am of what I'm doing. We're going to take a look at some of the um, options. We're going to edit Go all the way down to general display options. We just hit the O key. That brings up our default um, general options panel. Content directory is something that you may change unless you're working um, and organizing your, your files in Lightwave. This is all the default. We're not going to change anything here. We're just going to show you what's what's here. The linear color space has been a change in Lightwave since 9.6, I think. We look at the display options. Now the layout is uh, basically what you're looking at is everything that's checked. We're going to leave all that alone. When you first open up um, Lightwave, your point selection, your egg selection, and polygon selection colors will all be the normal selection color default of 255, 255, 191. I have changed those. Um, to represent when I'm in different modes. So basically, if I hit the points tab, I have a visual cue. I can hit on the selection tab. It tells me I'm in points mode um, because my cursor is in um, crosshairs. And so I click on each of the tabs um, in the modes tab. It's also reflected in the bottom. So again, as I'm in points mode, my cursor is just a crosshair. So I hit the space bar to go to edge mode. My cursor now changes to a diagonal. Hit the space bar again. I'm in polygonal mode. Now my crosshairs have a 45 degree offset in rotation. That's a visual cue to let me know I'm in um, polygon mode. But I, to have an additional uh, visual cue, I use the color selection for the mode. So when I click on a box, I'm in polygonal mode. My selection turns red. That's how I have set it up in um, my display options. And then if I hit the space bar, or just do, do deselect, change my mode to points mode, select the points. Those points again will show up in blue because that's how they're set up in my display options. And again, if I hit the space bar to get the edge, make an edge selection, those selections will show up in green because that's again, again, that's how I have the edge selection color set up in my display panel. And layout, I can also change how the layout opens. So I can go to a single, um, and also save it as a preset and go to double horizontal, um, whatever. I can make this is all personal um, uh, options for the user. Uh, in the GL tab, texture resolution is a thing that you may want to change depending on the horsepower of your machine. It's machine dependent. If your machine can keep up, uh, go ahead and change it. This gives you better rendering. Your viewports. These are the viewport. Basically, the same uh, menus that are available in each of the upper left-hand corner uh, viewports are also available here. So I look at the top left. My view type is top, which is reflected in, in that window. So all the uh, menu um, selections that I have available in that viewport are also available in my display options panel. The same thing with the uh, Render style. I can change the render style either in the uh, viewport of, of my window or in the um, viewport of the display options. Backdrop. This is where you're going to put your reference images. 
do not do not confuse that with the uh, um, reference objects in a background layer. Um, your reference images are what you will be using to um, make your sketches to or draw your, uh, um, basically you're going to be tracing a light wave. This is where, where these are placed. The interface. This is your alert level high. When you're first starting out, leave that at high. That'll give you a lot of feedback. Um, if you're doing something incorrectly or if light wave should crash for whatever reason, it'll um, give you some more information about why it crashed. The last thing is units. The only thing I've changed here is the snap to grid. I've turned that off because I do not like um, the restrictions of having my points snap to lines. I want that additional freedom of being able to float uh, my object endpoints into uh, space. It's just a freedom of personal preference. Now we're going to look at the symmetry. Now symmetry is basically Whatever I selected with respect to the Y axis is reflected on the other side. So when I make a selection, I'm selecting two edges, top and bottom. Those selections are also duplicated on the other side. So if I make a move, hit T to move, I'm going to move to the right, stretch, to stretch it out, and you will see that the other side also made the same uh, movement in equal value. I'm going to undo. Space bar to drop the tool, question mark to drop the selection. We're going to also take a look at the modes. Drop symmetry. Now the action center is basically has to do with when you're sizing or scaling an object. Now I can do it based on mouth, mouse position, origin, a pivot point in my object, or the selection of the object. Okay. That's going to be a very important tool. It's important that you understand that. We will get into some of that later. Sub D type, uh, I can do everything in, in sub patch. If you're going to move into other 3D packages, most 3D packages only want to see three and four sided polygons. Catmull cart lets you model in n gon. So basically anything greater than four polygons will uh, render properly. The numeric and statistics panels. I'm in edge mode. Um, the numeric panel is a very uh, precision information tool. So if you're trying to do some precision modeling, the numerics panel is what you're going to want to go to to set up uh, your modeling uh, for your objects. Let's see, we're going to go to the info panel. Or hit I. Now the info panel shows basically what mode you're in. Um, so this is the tickets panel. So as you change your modes, it'll re tell you what's in there. Um, Right now, everything's stuck on two polygons. If we select an edge, we're actually going to select two edges because we're uh, orthogonal view. We're going to hit both edges, top and bottom. This tells me, if I do a pull down, it'll tell me where it is in 3D space and ID each of those objects by number. In the statistics panel, I can pull and it shows me I have two, two polygons. Uh, it just highlights. I can turn them on and turn them off in the um, Statistics panel. I can change mode to polygon mode. Look at the number. It tells me I have, I have a box. So I have six edges, but it's only showing me that if I, I've only selected three of the possible um, polygons in my information panel. And it shows me what they are, size and position. I'm going to change it to points mode. Here again, I've selected two points. Um, because I'm in an orthogonal view, um, I can pull up and down and get the exact placement in 3D space, and I can also ID the points by clicking on the numbers in the information panel. Very powerful tool. This will help you um, in your modeling and help you undo some uh, evils without having to undo a lot of stuff. And in the very bottom, you will see um, the actual um, common points in the um, in the editor editor panel there. So that's your points. That's what we're going to look at are the map tools. So here you've got a, a weight map, texture map, a morph map, color map, and selection set. We're not going to do anything, but notice that that's where that's located. And it's also located in the map menu tab at the top. If you go over here to look at the tools, you will see weight map, 
a color, UV texture, and morph target. And that is an overview of the LightWave 10 Workspace in Modeler. Hope you learned something. This is Socrates for IM3D Graphics, out.